All right, everybody. This is real life. I know you're confused. I just put in a strike plate for a door that goes from the garage to the outside side of the house. And this is it, this is the big one. Smoke detectors. This was a rental house, it's been sold, it's vacant, and it's missing two smoke detectors. Someone's gotta get paid to put these smoke detectors in, so it might as well be me. Um, I'm gonna use the adapter. Bada boom, bada bang. I'm gonna check the wire nuts, make sure there's no loose connections on the wire nuts. And uh, yeah, that's about it. In and out. What do they, what do they say? Honest day's wage for a honest 20 minutes of work. I'll take it. Now, the one in that room over there, I just gave a little tug on the, on the pigtail. Yep, just like this one. You know, those electricians. They're not experimental electricians like me. Just wiggling it around the uh the signal wire pulled right out of the wire wire nut and we got this one is looking like it might come loose too so i'm going to reattach the signal wire now will this base fit on the old base I don't think I'm gonna get that lucky but I'm gonna try it I'm gonna try it so I'll shove this up in there and take a quick look uh, no can't get too lucky so I gotta get a screwdriver Just with one little tug, didn't even have to pull it very hard. So if one goes off, they all go off. That's what that red wire is, the signal wire. The battery backed up, say the power's out, battery kicks on, that red wire still acts as a signal wire, so they will all go off under battery power. Made a lot of money in this neighborhood. So I worked for a group of investors, and this was one of their rental houses, and uh, it's, it's sold, they, sell, they sold it off as is condition take it or leave it and it's sold within an hour i can't believe it show you around a little bit this is the railing that i fixed oh, a month or so ago let me take you outside show you the neighbors i've worked on all these houses it's crazy going back over a decade so this house here i don't want to get too close this is under new ownership so I built that covered patio, everything. I installed the ceiling fans. That was over a decade ago. And did quite a bit of work in that house. That was the uh, blank check remodel over there. And now there's this house and they bought it in some rough shape. Look at that. But it's pretty much cosmetic. 
these 1990s track homes are so easy to to recondition you do re refinish the hardwood new carpet and paint and this place looks almost brand new i mean there's a little bit of a water leak <laughs> and i don't know that could be a really old water leak that's been repaired take you a quick tour here it's a really nice house it was hard hard lived in from rentals but uh, you can see this this uh, seam popped up here right there it's a drywall seam there and there i probably didn't change the furnace filters very often master bedroom got a master bathroom it even comes with carpet on the wall. Just want to get climb right in there, huh? But nice, nice toilet seat. This is, comes with with the house. Get yourself a nice, <laughs> nice seat. Just a little fixer upper. Probably should have bought it. Kind of nice. I like. Open to downstairs, got the loft, little island. Teeny little yard though. No place for a workshop. Hello everybody. Gonna do some bonus material. That's what I used to call it a couple years ago and I never really continued it. I think it's something I'm gonna do more often. It's kind of give you an update of behind the scenes, what I'm working on. I do have an important talking point about today's video that relates to buying a house and selling a house and the disclosures or lack of disclosures. I see a lot of people getting screwed over because they may have relocated from a state. Jesus, what's that? Fighter jets going overhead, going to war. Maybe they relocated from a state where there were uh, hev heavy regulations and you had to get a, uh, an inspection by a state licensed you know, company that had to meet all these special criteria before you could sell the house. And then they moved to a state where there isn't really any regulations and it's up to the home to hire an inspector, do the inspection themselves, uh, but basically to go through the house with a fine tooth comb and find the problems because nobody's gonna disclose it to you. I got into a discussion recently with someone who is unaware of these issues. Now you're supposed to disclose anything relevant to the new buyer. Like, uh, oh, we had a roof leak or we had a pipe burst or this is currently wrong with the house. Uh, here's an example. I did a home inspection for a customer a couple years ago. Uh, did quite a few of the videos on the main YouTube channel. Oh, we are on the main YouTube channel. And there was a belly in the main sewer line underneath the front yard. And it was very obvious that the sellers knew about it. How did I know that? Because there's a clean out in the basement. Um, you know, you have your main stack come down and then there's a Y, a clean out, where you can go run a snake down under the, the basement slab and clean everything out. Well, that clean out had been so wallowed out. So there's a, there's a cap that goes on there. The cap was off because it couldn't even get the cap on it. It had been snaked so many times that the bottom side of that Y, probably you would have one in here. It's just a pipe that comes out off your main stack there uh, where all your, all your water goes. It had reamed out, the threads were gone, even the, the whole bottom lip was worn away. Probably got snaked every year, a couple times a year. Well, I found that. I called for a sewer scope. That's where they put a, a scope down there. I actually have one now, my own. When we present this to the sellers, they've got to do something about it because they didn't disclose it. They ended up paying around $15,000 to have the entire front yard completely dug up from the sidewalk to the front door, or underneath the front door, where they, they kind of excavated underneath the footer and ha they had to put a new whole main line in that's where the belly was and then they also compensated the buyer to redo the landscaping and put it all back together that should have been a disclosure but it's not going to get disclosed 
It's kind of an unenforceable rule or law or regulation. And this, anyways, this person that I was having conversation with was just all distraught over this fact. And they were kind of yelling at me about it. Do you think that's morally right? You can tell, tell which, what type of person they were. And I said, it doesn't really matter what I think. We're just having a conversation about what things are really like out there in the real world. It kind of establishes a new baseline. It's a don't ask, don't tell type thing between the realtor and the seller. They don't ask and you don't tell. If you have a good relationship with that realtor, maybe you've invested in a few properties, you've bought and sold several. Uh, most of the realtors I know do this as a side gig of buying and selling their own houses and maybe buying for rentals or flipping and where a lot of people live nobody's disclosing anything i've been doing this for a long time and i've worked on both sides i've worked for buyers that have just bought a house or thinking about buying a house they have me inspect the house they have me fix all sorts of things that they find after they moved in and i've worked for a lot of sellers you've seen a lot of these projects on this channel where I'm going through and using a uh, oil-based primer to paint over water stains in the garage ceiling. It could be a problem. Most likely it came from the tub overflowing from the, the bathroom above it. Um, I don't know the details, but I know that I've done it on both sides. I don't get involved. I just do the work get paid type thing. The purpose of this little conversation is to inform potential buyers that you're not always going to find what's wrong with your house and the sellers most likely will never tell you things that are wrong with your house. It's up to you to find them. On to something a little bit more fun. I've got little side projects. One is the Mongoose Decade behind me. I've got new tires. I got, look at this. I got new old stock brake levers. These are exact replacements to the ones that were on here. Uh, one of them's even missing. That's pretty cool. Had to dust off the old eBay account uh, to get these parts. Um, I do some other little things. I'll show you what I'm working on over here. So this is a uh, champion generator. Does that say uh, 3,500? Yeah, 3,500 watts inverter. And I think that's 3,500 watts continuous, but don't quote me on that. And I took it out on a... Uh, an arctic high altitude camping trip last year and this was supposed to be the main source of electricity didn't hold up and i had to use on my backup solar power somehow worked flawlessly throughout the whole trip and i mean these were rough conditions you can see how dirty this thing is it's super dusty this is kind of mounted on the back of my camper but it wouldn't start and i would tear it apart get to this point and i would pull it and i could get it to start and i'd be like oh i must have fixed it and then put it back together and it wouldn't uh wouldn't work. Where the heck did the parts just go that I had here? This is the battery switch on this Champion generator. Is that cheap and chintzy or what? Uh, it's supposed to be rated for a thousand electrical cycles. Well, it has continuity, um, but uh, not enough continuity to send power through the switch and to the starter solenoid and all the other components. So I ordered a new switch. And I think... If I've done my diagnosis correctly, I swap this in and everything's good to go. I am going to have to protect this a little bit more because I travel a lot of dusty back roads. This will probably go up on the, the Instagram channel. So if you're interested to see if this switch fixed the problem, you know, I have to go over to my Instagram. Going forward, I'll probably make this project into a video that will go on the Super Secret Third YouTube channel. Um, so if you're interested in that, hit me up in the Instagram DMs. Uh, maybe have your account public so I can do a little background check on you. Don't want any crazies over there. Uh, keep that third channel, that third brand, small on purpose because I don't want any weirdos following me around. So if you got questions about what I charged, it was, uh, what was it, 500 bucks for 20 minutes. A lot of people don't like that. He only put a strike plate on and just plugged in two smoke detectors. But this guy has a closing even though the house was sold as is i mean the house was had a lot of cosmetic problems the buyer always has to get something it's it's weird it's like two smoke detectors and a strike plate that's what you're going to come to closing with or that's going to be your contested items it's weird they have to have something to contest 
and the seller is always like, okay, we'll, do, we'll give it to you. One of the contentions was there was a elevated radon levels in the basement. And the seller said, no, nope, sorry, we're selling this to you under the appraised value. So you can handle that on your own. The seller said, okay, I'll give you the smoke detectors and the strike plate. He's making a ton of money uh, off of this sale. And so paying me 500 bucks uh, to just kind of smooth out the uh, the closing process or in, in making sure the deal gets done um, is is nothing. It's nothing when you're making a half a million dollars in profit. Not every job is this easy. I wish they were. I wish every day I just went off and did strike plates and smoke detectors, but it's not always that way. So anyways, we'll have more discussions on that on the business channel. The business channel will be linked in the description below this video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.